Hi everyone, thank you very much for watching or listening. Uh, Liam Hartry here, another episode of Presenting Champions. Today with Jody Miko, World Heavyweight Bare Knuckle Boxing Champion. An amazing story of how we got there as well. Today we're going to be talking about um, the world title win as well as Jody's upcoming world title fight uh, at the time of this interview uh, this weekend. So we're going to be talking about that. Jody and myself did a, a cracking interview a few years ago, a couple of years ago, talking about his boxing career. Uh, talking about you know how he turned his life around in and out of prison and all that sort of stuff. Today we're updating on that and we're going to be talking about his switch to bare knuckle and how he's basically taking the bare knuckle world by storm. So uh, so yeah, champ, thanks for coming back on the show. Oh, and, uh, thank you. Absolute pleasure. So let's get into it then. Uh, I'm going to start at the present and then work backwards a little bit. So you've got massive fight coming up against Dan Podmore. Um, yeah. at the same time of this interview this weekend. Walk us through, you know, how you're feeling in, in fight week, um, how you anticipate the fight going. If there's anything you'd like to share about that side of things, please. Your face, I said, I've been there before, sort of, you know, not this, we say this level, well, not this level of BKB and stuff like that, but you know, I've been there before. It's like I say, I mean, it's a few years older. And it's what excites you, you know, it's the big fights, the big, big, obviously, obviously, obviously being a big venue and the lights. And it's what excites you to fight. If this sort of thing will excite you, and yes, just fuck. Maybe you'll play football or something, aren't you? you know, there's no point of being involved in this if you can't get up a fight like this. So, yeah, so it's like I say, I've, I've trained quite, I've, well, I've trained really hard for this one. Um, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm, obviously, Dan's very, very confident. I'm confident. So, it's, I think it's been absolutely bad, so to be fair. Yeah, it should be. It should be an absolutely amazing one. And it really yeah. seems like you've got that fire in your belly. Um, you know, to, to fight at the highest level again, which is which yeah. is fantastic. Um, another thing about this as well, fighting at the O2, I mean, you fought all over the UK um, during your yeah. career, and I remember when we were talking before, but how do you, what, what do you think of that as a venue? I mean, fighting in front of a massive crowd like that, is it sort of like a dream come true? It's like I say, a lot of people say, we're at the O2, the O2. Well, technically we are, but we're not actually inside the O2. But mm -hmm. I'll tell you now, it's an absolute fantastic venue. It's like a 3,000 seat venue actually inside the O2. And it's a, like I say, it's an absolute cracking venue, it really is. Um, and it's like I say, I remember um, Brad Paul's obviously a, a Nuki fighter, puts him up on Facebook, so obviously he's really well followed. And he's, he's like getting his people to sit in a certain place. And I messaged him to Brad, listen, mates, no matter where your people sitting there on a fantastic view, I don't think there's shit seat in the house sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. like, I say, it, like I say, it's a cracking venue, it really is. Amazing. Amazing. Well, wishing you the best of luck for that. You know, uh, okay. it's going to be an absolutely cracking fight, and obviously respect to Dan as well. I've had him on this show. Yeah, course, he's yeah. Great fighter. Yeah. yeah, he's a great fighter as well. So, you know, as you say, absolute barn burner. It'll be brilliant. Going back a couple of steps to, you know, you winning the world title and, and all that side of things. Obviously, when we last spoke, you know, you were retired. You were, you know, you were quite happy. You were in a different position. Yeah. In, you know, and you were you were sort of enjoying life. What was it that actually inspired you in the, in the beginning? If we go back before the world title fight, what made you want to take the fight? You know, when did you decide that I want to get in there again type of thing? <laughs> Mully, it really won. It's a cracker. Um, obviously, to be fair, obviously, obviously, I spilled the wire for you like that. And uh, obviously, that's saying I'm not the wrong. It's not a bad thing, split up. I, 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 my luck in life now is amazing. Uh, yeah, but obviously, I spilled the wire for you like that. And obviously, I. Uh, the sound, oh, I ended up being a new partner. And obviously, I ended up in, uh, in Newquay, obviously, hence College Raya. And um, like I say, obviously, I go back up every week to pick the kids up. And just, it's costing an absolute arm and leg sort of thing. I mean, it ain't good money, but I don't think that good money. Uh, I'll bear in mind, I was paying fuel up there, but in that hotel, they're like, it's stupid money. And I said to my partner, I said, um, I still want to sit out. So I'm going to go back to do some white qualifiers. She did a few quid. Then she went, um, no, 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 I don't, I don't do that. So anyway, um, I got, a, I got a little taste of the uh, rattler cider down the corners right here. The corner side, yeah. So I was, I was three parts pissed on that. No, I'm, I'm a good boy now. I don't have one or two now. But yeah, I was three parts pissed on that. And um, I seen Jim Doug had put a uh, new lab on the way. No shit out this, that, and the other. Obviously, down the pulled out. Obviously, I didn't know at the time. So, um, me three fat pissed. Messaged him, says that who's your who, weight for? Anyway, he didn't reply back, anything like that. Next day, I'm walking across site. 
Anyway, it's a, it's a box. Hey, it did make sure. So, retired, I'm walking on site as a fat retired boxer. Retired finished having a shite and wiped my ass. I was going to buy my BKB world title. He <laughs> really couldn't write it, honestly. Um, yeah, I was doing messy about all the, all the, all the, all the shit I like. And um, yeah, but then that's what it's about. It's all because of like, the box, it's all keeping the world title. So, you know, fantastic. I mean, I, I used to speak to Dorian already on um, on Twitter. Um, like I said, I always got on, but like I say, to be fair, it's like I say, it wasn't, wasn't that much. I mean, like, a few quid sort of thing. Obviously, the mortgage needed paid in January. Uh, I spoke on it Christmas. Uh, so, yeah, so, and that's how it came about. Obviously, um, I go into it, and I've really a lot of the anticipation of winning it sort of thing. Um, and like I say, <laughs> I went out of the piss on the Thursday. It came into half a straight on Friday morning. I drove down to London, I don't know whether we were in the business still or not. She would actually do lally at me. I obviously fought Friday, obviously, you know, put in what is it? What? Well, you can't look at it, obviously, you're cutting bad. And um, you got to stop them on the title. So, yeah, and that's how I ended up going to BKV. Incredible. It's incredible. You're right. You're right. You're right. If someone told you that, you'd probably laugh at him, wouldn't you? Some normal person told you that. Oh, well, only you could tell me that, Jody. That's the thing. I mean, you know, a story a story like that um, could really only come from yourself. That's one of the things is that, that I love about you, you know, um, is, is you, in that way, you know, about fights, you just haven't got a care in the world. And you just rolled in there at the last minute and, and took it by storm. And I love it, you know, and, and that thing about being on the toilet and all that, man, you know, that could only come from, from the riot. You know? <laughs> Cornish yeah. right. I said, That's right. It's a true story. I come out of the ball and shout to my, I shout to my boss, Jake, Jake. I said, I'm fighting BKB World Title. And they have half a cycle around thinking, <laughs> the fight being in the, in, the, in the box sticking or doing something on drugs or something. I was only cracking up after the hot fire I was doing, but I was fighting doing drugs in the toilet. So I'm thinking I was doing that. Like, it was hilarious. But yeah, it's quite funny because quite a lot of the Welsh lads on the site was out at the time in Truro. And there was a few people like Dorian's friends, actually. It was, uh, it's, it's, it's funny, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it is It is amazing. And like I say, it's, it's, a, it's a brilliant story. I knew there'd be a good story behind it because it, it's yeah, coming. Cool. <laughs> you know, that's, that's exceeded like what I thought of it. So a couple of other things about the fight as well, just because uh, I know you're quite sort of relaxed about it, but, it, you know, it's still a big win. Bare knuckle boxing, was it much too different to adapt to it, you know, because like people say these different things, like the punches come faster and some people say it hurts more than boxing and different things. But like, was it that different to you or did you did you just find it easy to transition? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, mate, I, I don't want these people both show me. I'm, sorry, I can't, I can't, I'm not going to tell and say, do you know what, I went there, it didn't hurt or anything like that. Do you feel when I was in there, I didn't feel like it hurt as much. Oh, well, yeah. oh, not when I boxed there, it didn't really hurt massively. I mean, at the time I found the boxing ring, I didn't have my combi. I mean, I had a black eye and a nick, obviously, from that. Uh, they hit me some absolute pearls. Um, I think it was at one point where it was shot and it jabbed my neck into a shot that hurt. But, uh, but like I say, to be fair, the next day I felt all right. The day after, was fucking hell, I felt like being in a car crash. I felt like someone hit me with a sledgehammer, honestly. I couldn't move, honestly. For a week, I was, I was oh, oh, it was awful. It was horrendous. Honestly, the pain I was in for a week after that. Was unbelievable. Well, yeah. So uh, I'm looking forward to next week. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. That's it. But as well as that, though, I mean, the one other thing about this fight, really, the last thing about this fight with with Dorian, is after the fight. I mean, obviously, you won. You're the world champion. At that time, you know, what was going through your mind? Because obviously, you turned up at the last minute. You said just now, you know, you weren't expecting a lot from it, if you get what I mean. But obviously, yeah. you know, you, you yeah. became the world champion. So. In that moment when you, you know, when you realise you've won or like just afterwards when you were being interviewed, because I saw you being interviewed you know, with the belts and all that sort of thing, what's going through your mind? Like, were you, were you surprised? Were you... Were you like, I'm, quite, I'm quite emotional and stuff like that, to be fair. It's fair, but believe it or not, I'm actually quite emotional first and stuff to shit. Uh, but yeah, like I say, like I say, that's how I'm that far, I always say, I'm staffed all me, I'll always be me. You know, I, you know, I can have a million quid in the bank, all the titles in the world, millions of pounds. And I'd still just have told me, you know. Um, so I, I did, I did, don't get me wrong. I mean, I love in the belts and towers and stuff like that, but you know, it's not, not for the chat. I don't, I don't think now, guess what? I'm Charlie Beeksman, that's that number. Okay, I couldn't have said, I couldn't have any title in, in the pros boxing. 
you know what I mean? So I'll always be that, no, I'll always, that, I'll always be grounded, a grounded person. Not mm-hmm. a great Bob Shear, but I you know. And like I said, don't worry, I won like obviously the biggest title in in the BKB in the BKB. You know, like I say it's a great little thing. It's a great thing to have. You know, it's all stay for life. But like I say, I'll always just I'll always just be me. Um, mm-hmm. Same old daft on me, you know. Well, yeah, that's the way to be, and that's what that's what people love about you. You know, is you just you're so down to earth, and you know you're a very humble guy, and, and all that sort of thing. And that and that's a good way to be. You know, it shouldn't be any different to that. You know, when you see champions and they get stuck up and all that sort of thing, you know, it's it's bad for the sport. It's bad for everybody. You know, but I knew you'd be very humble about it. You know, I knew that. I just was just curious what you you know what you were thinking. And the last the last thing, like your family, your friends, your community, you know, people, like people's reaction to the fight, because obviously. It happened. It happened quite quick. I mean, I remember seeing it announced and everything, and I was really, I was quite excited for you to be, to be quite yeah. honest. I was really thinking, oh, you know, I, I hope he goes in and gets this. And Dorian, great guy, respect for him. Yeah, I, I think all of them are great guy. Yeah, and I, you know, because I know you, you guys know each other a little bit. But in terms of the reaction of, of like people, you know, whether it's your family, like your loved ones, people in the fight game. What was the response like after you won it? Was was your phone just blowing up or like? Yeah, you know, it's been amazing. To be fair, I like, I don't want to sound uh, disrespectful to what I've done or anything like that, but to me, I'm probably going to sound bad here. But like I said it, it's not. It don't mean nothing to me, sort of thing. I don't. I don't mean that uh, like disrespectful to BKB, to in the town, things like that. You know, but them titles mean more to me. It, it meant more to the people than me, and I've loved being the person that can do that sort of thing. Uh, if you know what I mean, that's that sounded backward, but it's like, for example, like seeing the little kids in the belts. Like, I want to come over and see what Steph on the belt, like, yeah, he's jump, jumping the world. He loved it. Okay, well, look at that. But, yeah, honestly, uh, obviously, the two little step kids, they absolutely loved them. You know, it meant the world to them, you know, and obviously, that obviously that meant it for me. It's like, um, I do a thing, uh, quite a lot for uh, charity to scrum pop still, men's mental love charity, one for lads. And I took it up there to, you know, show the lads' belts for the lads there. And like I say, I love it. You know, like I said, I'm, 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 listen, them belts are going to be more than they scratch to shit. Uh, I'm going to get the right bollocks off Jim Dunn when he, when he sees the state of them. Uh, but yeah, um, the, the lad of really miles, unbelievable. You know, like I say, I, I love being able to take it to the gyms and stuff like that, and the kids. And to be fair, that's what's made it for me more than anything, you know. And like I say, I don't mean to be time to respect them, something like that, but that is what's made it for me. You know, see, but I think more people, other people, are more enjoying than me. If you know what I mean, do you know what I mean? That oh, sounds yeah. a bit, that sounds backwards sort of thing. But I love, oh, I love yeah. the face, the smile you put on people's faces. It's great. Yeah, no, it makes total sense. It makes 110. percent It makes total sense. And you know, I think that's a wonderful message. To be honest, to be just to be quite honest with you, I mean, it's it, it's a great thing giving it to other people. You know, inspiring other people with yeah. it and all that sort of thing. And. Uh, you know, it's very cool, but at the same time, you know, you're humble about it. I think it's, it's quite well deserved, you know, because you've put many, many years into the game. As a pro. Yeah, honestly, and you know, as a pro and as everything you were doing, and obviously, like we talked about last time, with uh, the amount of pro fights you had, then being over yeah. with people, with wasn't it, and all those, and everything you everything you put into the game for years and years to get something big like this back. Yeah, of course, yeah. It's, it's, it's nice, don't worry, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, but I get what you're saying about other people, and it makes a lot of sense, and... Uh, but it, you know, it must be weird, like being stopped in the street and, and all that sort of thing. Are people stop, are people stopping you in the street now? Well, it's funny, it like... it's ironic because I went to Tenerife training, and uh, <coughs> uh, 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 my friend Thomas Melville. I was like, I say, I got a lot of sponsors, and obviously, I pay for fights, things like that. And my, old friend, my old friend Thomas Melville, he came up, uh, he um, he came with me uh, from his Melville hotel. And obviously, he paid all the gigs and like that with a nice little swanky hotel and stuff. So I trained at Tenerife. Everyone thought I was there on the piss. I won't, oh, honestly. Uh, I was trying to bollocks off. And he's only there for me, uh, obviously, the, the Friday to Monday. And I'm a real weed eater. I mean, what well, boring you? I only went to one place, at, well, one, one place at dinner time and one place at night time. And I, at night time, the wait is, uh, obviously, obviously on, on the Monday, a friend of the left says, Where are your friend? Where are your friend? So I go home. He says, Why are you on hold on your own? I said, No, this is a fight. I'm training, training. So you show me pictures, and show me pictures of these titles. That was it. Every time I in those people and the pictures took it like cracking on. Fuck you, let me be dinner, pal. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm nothing special. Don't look at box rep. Fuck's sake. You'll be devastated. But yeah, honestly, it's, it's madness. But like I say, uh, I love it like saying in Cornwall and stuff like that, people have to, that's, 
Oh, it was brilliant. It's, it's been how, how people down here took it as well. You know, wrong with the few Cornish folk like, well, he's not even Cornish, he's not Cornish. <laughs> well, all right, mate, I live here. The journey started here, the journey will end here. So, yeah, it's funny. But I love it. Yeah, no, it, it is funny. It is funny, but it's, it's really good to get that that insight into what it must be like, you know, walking around as, uh, as world champ. Um, and obviously, we've given, we've given Dorian a mention as well. Great guy, a lot of respect for him. Yeah, and if you. he watches this, wish him good luck for his fight on the weekend as well. Yeah. Uh, obviously, British title fight that he's got coming up uh, as well. So, good luck for that. But yeah, moving on into the last couple of things, really. Obviously, you know, you'll be fully focused now on on Dan Podmore. Like I say, great fight. Uh, uh, I mean, he's been in there with so many different people, so many different styles. Assuming you beat him, what are you going to be looking to do after that? Are you going to be continuing with like BKB title defenses? What do you think of that side of you things? Know, I, yeah, well, it's, it's one day at a time. I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not getting younger, am I? You know, I'm 42 now. Uh, you know, it's one of the things where it's like, what do you do? Uh, it's one day. It's like, yeah, how long do you go? Uh, I say it's, it's one day at a time. We'll see how it goes, uh, and we'll go from there. Um, you know, to be fair, will, will this blast at every weight? I don't know if I'm... The thing is, when I come from Tenerife, I was nearly at Cruiserweight. You know, I, I, had to drink, I had to drink the Rattler side. It's a five a day. Just keep weight on. You know, keep, there's that. And there's, there's, a, there's a little butty shot. Well, a little... I'm going to get these sausage, sausage patties, the best ever, from Nookie Hotbox, uh, from his job where I'm work, working. And thanks to, thanks to uh, old Remy at Nuki, uh, Nuki uh, Hotbox and Rattler Cider, they, they put me back to heavyweight. So, where are they on to Cruiserweight next or not? I don't know. Well, like I say, we'll see what happens. We'll get it that way first. Let's not look look, look, look anywhere further than Saturday. Well, so, we yeah. go. Yeah, that's it. Well, you know, I was, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, you never overlook any opponent. But, you know, it's just good to get your thoughts on it because... I think you've really excited a lot of people, you know, with your switch to Ben Echo and, you know, a lot of fight fans will just be interested, which is, which leads me to uh, pretty much the last question for this as well, is obviously you, you're a very humble guy and you're not really too bothered about what people think one way or another, but there are a lot of people out there who support you and, you know, wish you all the best in your fights and things like that. Just want to give them a quick shout out and, and you know, a few good words for them. People who watch your fights, people who come along, um, you know, anyone who supports you watching this. What does that mean to you? Oh, it's amazing. It's, it's great. It's like, uh, like I say, uh, I was at a pre-fight haircut for my mate Clint today. And, uh, he loved having me in, in, in his shop and stuff, bless him. And he said, also, like I say, there's another guy who's come down here. Uh, I met him uh, down here, uh, called Jim Butler. He works at a fire station in London. And like I said, the amount of support I've been getting off people, messaging and things like that. It's, it's been absolutely fantastic. Like, it's been great. Um, oh, obviously, my sponsors. Uh, and stuff like that. It's like people being jumping on board. Obviously, bear in mind as well, I've not even mentioned them yet. Uh, obviously, when I first obviously uh, won the title, obviously, uh, Waxy with Nuki, uh, a local Jew in Nuki, they jumped on board and I got a strength condition trainer, Kieran Trudley. Obviously, I've been working with him. And also, I'd say, bear in mind as well, before this fight, I'd, I'd never had a boxing trainer. A lot of them forget about this. Uh, I've never had a boxing trainer. It's the first time I've had a boxing trainer in uh, Charlie Scott. You know, so um, it's great. So I'm probably more ready for this fight than I probably made a good fight. It's crazy you know, when you think of it. Well, yeah, so it's, it's been good. It's been good people jump on board up and that's been great. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's good to give them a shout out because, you know, the sport will be nothing without them. But yeah, what you said about having a trainer as well, I mean, yeah, that, that's a good point actually because I, I remember that when we were talking last time. Um, yeah, that you were doing it yourself, and you were doing it all yourself. So yeah, so that's a really good, uh, that's a really good well, point it, as well. It's, it's, it's ironic. It's ironic. Uh, obviously, uh, Dan Pop, uh, Dan, Dan put in his interview, couldn't hold on, new, uh, learn new tricks. But I say, well, be disrespectful, be like, I know one. And uh, I was, I was inclined to agree with him. I thought, not really. Old oh, O'Connor learned new tricks. When I was in Tenerife, and uh, old Manny Bassett, who should obviously. The Walsh brothers got a lot of respect for him. I know uh, Ryan Walsh got a lot of respect for him. He's like a five figure side of thing to him. And um, I say, uh, man, it's, it, we did a few things. It, it showed me a few little things. I was like, I want that gym. I thought, and it, and it just stuck him in. I thought, an old dog can learn a new trick. Bear in mind, if an old dog's not been learned, learn, if an old dog's not been learned, obviously, cards can learn new tricks. 
And I'm bringing my best mate, Lee Burr, up. I bring Lee, 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 Lee. You know that little thing, what he said? Yes. And I told him, I'm proper trusted bits of these little, little things I've done. I thought, that's, that's bang on, that is. It's, it's your crackers. But yeah, uh, that's safe. I want no respect for Dan. I want no respect for anyone. I've, I've, I've never really disliked anyone I've bought. So I mean, I think, I mean, Miles Shinkwin, me and him got off to the wrong point. But I said, I don't mind him at all. Oh, well, I said, I've always got my opponent. So it is what it is, you know. End of the day, I'm, I'm doing it to better the life of my family. Um, you know, I'm doing it for Q or something like that. You know, <laughs> there's no money on the line. I'm going to be doing it, would I? Um, so obviously, like I say, obviously, a lot of people have paid a lot of money to come and support me. So obviously, I want to put performance in for them. Um, but yeah, so I can't wait for it. I can't wait. Yeah. Well, it's amazing to see, you know, you've got the fire back in your belly again. You know, you're obviously raring to go and get in there. And yeah, what you were saying about it's never too late type of thing to learn new tricks or to do anything. It's, you know, the last thing I'm going to say before we uh, before we wrap this up is I actually think that what you've done with winning the world title on that is it's actually an inspiration to a lot yeah. of people. A lot of people said that. It's fantastic. You know what? The thing is, there's a lot of things wrong in society. Oh, I took a lot from society. It's nice to get back. It is nice. And like, if I can insult some confidence other people, then like I say again, you know, if, if that's what if that's what took winning the world title done, then I'll take that. I'll take that. You know, I really will. That's saying yeah. Uh, and I, I, you know, and I swear to God, when I'm saying this now, I'm not blowing smoke or nothing. Like I really mean it. You know, I really mean it because it shows people, you know, what can be done. You know, it's never too late. What you're just saying there, you know, people can learn something new at, at any age and, and all this sort of thing. Age is just a number anyway, because you were saying earlier about yeah. 42 and all that. But, but do you know what I mean? It, it, I just think it has that inspirational, sort of like a real life uh, Rocky type of thing. I know it sounds a bit corny, you know, and it sounds oh, yeah. a bit... It is, it hugely is. It's like, yeah. it's like I say, he's a proper Cinderella type story, isn't it? If you told someone, obviously last, I don't know, in December, well, it'd be in January. But someone's like, oh, I was going to do whatever they do. It was like, they probably took you away in the white coast to lock you up. They really would have, wouldn't they? Oh, yeah. That's, that's well, it. Yeah, and that's, that's what it shows, man. And it's just and it's just a total amazing story of, like, you know, how the underdog can win, basically, at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and I love that. I absolutely love that. Well, all I will say is uh, it's good luck, obviously, for, uh, for the weekend, for Saturday, um, you know, for this World Title Fight. By the time a lot of people watch this, that fight will have happened, but at the same time, good luck for it, and uh, I wish you best of luck for your future fights as well. Um, and it's been a, a real pleasure to have you back on here, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel, and there'll be more videos coming soon.